What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades. Today's feature blade is from Kaiser. What we have here is the Kaiser OFID. That's O P H I D, OFID. And uh, this is a model K1405. And just to let everybody know, I'm a little late to the game with this knife. This is actually a discontinued model. I think that you can still find them out there in stock in places. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I saw them priced below $90. And I think that it's actually a pretty decent deal with that. In fact, I'm going to say this. I only found one thing wrong with this knife, and it's something you can fix yourself. All right, guys, let's set this down right here. We'll take a look at it, and uh, let's pull out the package in here. And what we've got is the Kaiser package in here. You can see it. You've got the exterior box, um, the interior structured box. Now, this is a lot like a jewelry box, uh, much bigger for a knife, of course, but it is a structured box. Uh, inside, you will find the... Uh, Kaiser zipper pouch and Kaiser branded microfiber cloth and some Kaiser paperwork that is your typical warranty information, care information, whatnot. Now, let's talk about these zipper pouches. And uh, I have started hearing people complain that they would like to get these pouches in something other than this uh, digital camo. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care. Uh, this is one of the best pouches that you will find with any knife on the market. This is something these Chinese brands are really, really doing right. Uh, if you're going to spend $100 to $200 on a knife, it's extremely nice that you get something like this with it. It makes it feel more premium. All right? Uh, there are a lot of knives out there that you'll spend $200 on and you get it in a little fold-up cardboard box and that's it. Um, this is a lot nicer presentation and what you've got in here is nylon interior. On the left-hand side, you've got two pockets over here and then on the right-hand side, you've got a single pocket. Um, you could actually use this pouch as sort of a small EDC type of pouch. You could carry a, um, a knife in it, a flashlight, a small pry bar, um, a, a notebook, and a ballpoint pen, uh, a few other things. And this would fit down in any uh, cargo pocket and a lot of front pockets on jeans, as long as they're not too tight. Um, but here at Baz on Blades, we don't wear tight jeans because we're not 21 years old anymore uh, and we don't look good in them. So anyway, let's take a look at this knife really quick. Let's go over the specs and get the numbers out of the way. Uh, this is a full size, sort of medium, large size knife. You're looking at a three and a half inch blade or nine centimeters. Uh, your blade stock thickness, a nice beefy 155 thousandths of an inch or right at four millimeters. Uh, your blade width, 1.21 inches or 30 millimeters. Your handle length, four and five eighths of an inch or 12 centimeters. Your handle thickness is 600 thousandths of an inch or six tenths of an inch. Uh, or 15.3 millimeters. The handle width at the widest at the pivot is 1.35 inches or 34.5 millimeters. Your closed width again at the pivot and including the flipper tab is 1.66 inches or 42.3 millimeters. Your overall length is nine and an eighth inches or slightly less than 21 centimeters. Uh, it does have a decent size stop pin at 155 thousandths of an inch or 3.9 millimeters. And behind the edge thickness on this hollow ground blade, a pretty decent 20 thousandths of an inch or 0.52 millimeters. Your handle to blade ratio on this, I think was 0.74 and your weight 4.9 ounces or 139 grams. All right. 
Now, I want to say something about this knife. I, I very much like this sheep's foot blade profile with this dropped point on it. I very much like the handle profile. And uh, I wish that this knife was still in the Kaiser lineup. I'd like to see some different iterations of this knife. Uh, rather than a liner lock, I would like to see it in a uh, maybe a G10 show side with a titanium frame lock or a full titanium uh, frame lock. That would be very interesting, and I think that this design is worthy of that. In this knife, what we're getting material-wise is... Uh, CPM S35VN for the blade steel. Uh, most of you will know what that is. It's basically a modernized and improved version of S30V. And um, uh, S35VN is probably, or at least in my opinion, the most balanced of the sort of entry-level high-end steels. It's not the extreme high-end. Uh, it's more of the entry-level into the high-end, and you will see it across manufactured knives from the uh, you know, $50 price point on some knives, if you look hard enough, up to two or three hundred dollars on the high-end production and a lot of custom makers are still using uh, S35VN in five hundred dollar knives. Uh, it is very popular. You get good to very good edge retention or wear resistance. The toughness is good, slightly better than S30V, uh, in that you don't get the chipping issues that you can get with S30V. And because of a 14% chromium content, you get good corrosion resistance. And you'll typically see S35V in rock weld right around 60. Uh, the typical range is going to be 59 to 62. Uh, it's fairly easy to resharpen. It does retain the edge fairly well. Once the razor edge comes off of it, it holds a working edge for quite a bit of time. Uh, and like I say, it's got very good corrosion resistance and toughness. It's a very balanced, uh, high-performance stainless steel. All right, in your handle, what you've got is some sculpted and milled layered G10. You can see that it is red and black layers, and by the shine on it, you can see that it's got pretty much a polished finish on it. Uh, again, it is it is you know radially finished, and then let's look very close here. This mill work in this pattern is very deep, guys. Um, I don't have a height gauge, but it is, it's at least a millimeter deep um, and very well done. So you've got this red black G10. Uh, you've got some stainless steel pivot here in small parts, uh, stainless steel standoffs. This is a titanium liner lock with very heavy liners. Now keep in mind, this is about four millimeter blade stock, and you can see how thick that liner is in comparison to the uh, blade stock thickness here. So it is substantial titanium liners and they are not weight relieved. Uh, you sort of see that in the 4.9 ounce weight. Um, and then you do have a titanium pocket clip. Uh, so actually this, uh, this knife is outfitted pretty decently as far as materials go. You got a good performance blade steel, uh, some beautiful G10 with quite a bit of work done on it for your scales, titanium liner lock, some nice standoffs, titanium pocket clip, good to go there. Now, fit and finish wise, um, I am never, or anymore, I am never surprised when I pick up a Kaiser knife and the fit and finish is excellent. It doesn't matter what series it is, what price point it is. Uh, Kaiser is exercising a high degree of quality control in their knives, uh, meaning they just don't let them go out with very many issues. This is a hollow ground blade. 
Uh, it is very well done. The grinds are even. The edge grind is even. The finish, this stone wash finish, is even and very attractive. Uh, your markings, your etchings on the blade for Kaiser and your blade steel model number uh, and your model name here are very well done. Um, they are not the type of super black etchings that really stand out. In fact, you can sort of lose them, see right there, in sort of the texture and, and uh, reflection of the blade. Uh, so it's not real billboardy, even though those etchings are there. The fit and finish on the handle, the machining on these scales is perfect. Uh, I can find zero wrong with the machine, and whether you like this pattern in it or not, you like the color or not, the, as far as the fit and finish goes, it's absolutely perfect. Um, the small hardware is all finished very well. Uh, the fit between the, the titanium liners and the G10 scales, perfect, no issues there. Um, I, guys, it's just so very well done overall. So absolutely no issues in the fit and finish. All right, let's go on to action here. Now, this is a flipper folder, as you can see here, and the flipping action is excellent. I mean, it's really good, guys, um, and that is exceptional because this is not a ball bearing pivot knife it has phosphor bronze washers in it and i've got to tell you of all the knives i've ever handled that are phosphor bronze pivot um, and they are flippers this one has the absolute best action the detent is perfect for it it is stout enough to store plenty of kinetic energy so when it breaks loose the blade just rockets out um, the lockup on this is rock solid there is no play in any direction uh, the centering is pretty much perfect guys um, the only downside to those washers um, rather than bearings is it's not going to have the you know the drop shut sort of closing but it is extremely smooth rotating this slowly via the thumb studs here is it feels like a set of ceramic bearings with just a little bit more resistance it's just butter smooth. And then as, as far as using the flipper, yeah, it's very good. I, I'm not kidding, guys. It is very good. Um, it hands down the best flipper action I've ever felt on phosphor bronze washers. So the action, absolutely great as far as a washer build goes. And Honestly, it's as good as some cheaper bearing pivot knives that I have had in my hands. Um, it's pretty doggone good. Now, the um, <clears throat> let's go on to ergos and utility here. Uh, of course, this drop point sheep's footy type blade is just really one of the ultimate utilitarian blade shapes available on the market um, for us uh, it, currently. I mean, it, it just is. You get pretty much continuous belly here. You've got a decent enough amount of point um, tip here to you could do some piercing, although you are going to get some bluntness on the spine here on that drop point uh, because there's no swedge here at the tip. Uh, so this is not going to be a piercing, fanatic, sta super stabby, uh, shivy uh, type of knife, guys. Uh, but you could do some piercing with it. You could do some digging with it. If you needed to bore a hole with it, you could. And then you get the excellent utility belly here. You've got this high hollow grind with a nice thin edge at 20 thousandths of an inch. You have a functional sharpening choil here so you can sharpen all the way back and you can see this knife has been resharpened because this is one of the knives that Brian sent me in the big box of knives. Brian's big box of knives and uh, to loan 
four reviews. Thank you, Brian. And um, I just, you know what, as far as utilitarian use of this blade, uh, like most modern uh, drop pointing sheep's footy sort of blade profiles, it's, it's just an excellent, excellent working profile guys and with this thin hollow grind it is it's pretty doggone slicey uh, another good thing the thumb studs are back far enough to where they're not really in the way of using the base of the cutting edge also you've got a nice flat here that you can use your sharpener system with and you can get to the termination of that edge without getting up against the thumb studs now speaking of those thumb studs you saw me open the knife um yeah pretty much this knife it could do without the flipper guys it doesn't even need a flipper i mean as far as opening on the thumb studs it is easy to shoot out there it's intuitive uh, the thumb studs are sizable enough to get onto but they're not so sizable that they're in the way if you'll look here you can see they're pretty much even with the edge of the scale they don't they don't protrude out too far, so they're not going to be catching on anything. Uh, excellent thumb studs. Now, as far as the ergonomics of the handle, look at this handle. It looks like it was molded, shaped, uh, profiled for the human hand. You've got a nice concave section here that comes up to a sort of a very soft ramp sort of here on the spine of the blade. There is no jimping, so keep that in mind, Jim fanatics. But you've got this nice concave uh, that drops down towards the butt. The butt is radius, but has sort of a flat here for your thumb in reverse grip. Uh, you do have sort of a, a choil here, but it is not a super defined choil, and then it goes into the handle shape. It's more of the big, wide open, curvy uh, sort of choil area in combination with the flipper tab, uh, and then the handle opens up to a nice uh, palm swell across the width here, and it's pretty much wide open. And when a, a knife handle design is that wide open, it's good in multiple grips. It's good in a forward grip. It's good in a reverse grip. And again, there you go. You've got a place to put your thumb in a reverse grip. Uh, now, this knife does have a fairly sizable flipper tab. So this draw grip is not comfortable at all. You can see that the flipper tab does intrude uh, quite a bit into the web in between my thumb and first finger here. But as far as forward grip, and reverse grip you are good to go on this knife and that brings us to the only only downside in the ergonomics of this knife and actually the only down thing about this knife the only thing that i'm going to pick on and that is the pocket clip look at this guys this is absolutely the worst tip up stick in the palm of your hand pocket clip I have ever seen. Now the pocket clip itself, uh, as far as the shape of it, it's aesthetically pleasing. As far as the mount, uh, it is a single screw. It does sit down in a pocket that will keep it from squirming around and it is re uh, not reversible but changeable for tip up or tip down. Then you can see it is not reversible for left hand carry. Uh, but uh, no issues with how the pocket clip works. The only issue I have is that it is, has an extreme tip up and sort of a pointy, not sharp at all, but pointy tip um, from the factory. And that, as you can imagine, you hold this in your hand, you're holding it, you're working with it, you're cutting with it, you're doing some work over here, you just chopped down a tree over here, you stabbed it through a car door over here, and... Then you look and you do have where that tip is poking into your hand here. Okay, you can see that. So, that is not a huge deal. And it's terrible from the factory. All you got to do, you undo one screw, a T8. And look at this. I didn't mention this, but this is T8 construction all the way through, guys. Fantastic. 
This knife is super easy to disassemble and put back together. With the large hardware, you've got great clamping force and you get to use a bigger Torx bit and less chance of stripping out hardware or your bit. So all you gotta do, you undo one T8 Torx screw, you take this clip off, you clamp it up in a vise, and you take this tip and you bend the tip back down flat parallel to the handle scale material so it tips up and then it goes about halfway up the length here and it tips back parallel and that absolutely would fix that pocket clip beyond that it's got great clamping force and like i say it's aesthetically pleasing with the overall design and it is titanium uh, so, you know, kudos for that. Now, that's actually pretty good. And then, like I say, that is the only downside to this knife, period. Everything else is fantastic. Lanyard hole, I forgot to say that. And the only thing that's not fantastic is it's been discontinued. Um, but if you like this, go ahead out there and look. Just do a search on the Kaiser Ofid and... I can't remember if it was Knife Center. I believe Knife Center still had some of these in stock, and they were either $79 or $89. Um, and it is an excellent, excellent deal. Now, some of you guys, the really sharp knife guys out there, are going to ask in the, in the comments, well, Baz, that is a titanium liner lock. Have you had any issues with lock stick or anything like that and i'm going to tell you no there is zero lock stick now i heard rumors that later versions of this knife had a steel lock face and over travel insert but i have not seen that and i think that it would be highly unlikely it would be extremely hard uh, to do an insert on this liner lock even though the liner material is thick um, it would probably be too thin to machine the pocket out here to add a hardened lock face insert but as far as this titanium liner lock goes um, i have no no issues here with it uh, but like i say the lockup is solid solid um, there is no problem with lock stick it is easy to get to that liner lock you've got a decent pass through there uh, without it exposing too much of the liner lock um, so uh, no issues there guys um, for anybody that would be concerned about that all right let's do this let's bring this box back in here we'll set this knife down here and pose it real quick and uh, we will do we'll go over some closing thoughts for this knife and they pretty much echo my opening thoughts on this knife this is a fantastic design. This is one of those designs within the Kaiser uh, product line that I think may have gotten lost in the shuffle. It's one of their earlier designs, and Kaiser started bringing out their Bladesmith series, uh, all their collaborations on the higher end with the custom knife makers, and I think a lot of their prime and regular series knives that were very good have been overlooked now like i say this is an excellent excellent design from kaiser the blade profile and grinds are very good guys very utilitarian very slicey uh, there's plenty of stock thickness there for strength very good uh, the handle design very ergonomic, just the perfect size. Um, it is hand filling without being overbearing, and it does give you the option that wide open grip design of multiple grips. Um, even even though that I typically shy away from titanium liner locks, that's a, a very heavy liner. Uh, and heavy liner lock for this knife in titanium and I don't see any issues with lock stick or anything like that. Uh, that said I would not go hammering on it and um, doing a lot of spine wax on it 
and uh, taking a chance of compressing that titanium lock face. But I think under normal use, there would be no issue there. Uh, and it may, that lock face might even be uh, carbonized. Uh, I don't get that sort of crunchy, carbonized feel when I disengage the lock. But um, now this has been a user knife. Brian carries and uses his knife, and there's no absolutely no issues with that titanium liner lock. So it very well could be carbonized for extended wear. All right. If you can find this knife, I don't see any reason to not recommend it other than that pocket clip issue. And anybody that can bend a piece of titanium uh, can fix that in just moments. Just don't scratch it up or anything. Uh, or and you may scratch it up. This would be a great work knife with some scratches on it. It doesn't even matter. Um, but I can recommend this knife. Uh, thank you, Brian, for sending it to me. It's another one I probably would have never gotten my hands on, and I very much enjoyed the time with it. Um, you know, I just love looking at these knives and handling them. And even if it's not something that I would personally buy or I missed it, because there's so much out there, I still enjoy my time with it, and all of the viewers get to look at it too. So this is a recommendation if you can find it. Uh, Kaiser, I'd like to see you do some more with this design. You know, do a, a prime model in a titanium frame lock, and this thing would be a winner. Um, as always, thank you all for taking the time to view one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you later.